Hello, this is a quick demonstration of how to use a macro in lab chart in order to automate what would be a rather laborious repetitive job. For instance here I've got an ECG recording and the ECG recording is around 10 minutes long. It's recorded on a subject Limley 2 at rest and you can see we've got a, a lot of PQRST complexes here. Um, let's ask a very simple question of these data. Let's ask what the RR interval variability is. In other words, what the heart rate variability would be in this subject. Of course, if you're using Lab Chart Pro, you have access to the HRV or heart rate variability module, which allows you to do this sort of analysis automatically. But for the demonstration that we're doing here using a macro, we can do this ourselves without using um, the HRV analysis tool that comes with the pro version of the software. So what I'm going to do is first of all look at the data objectively and try and work out what it is that I'm actually asking. What I want to do is I want to look at the peaks of the R waves. I want the computer to select the data, the time between one peak and the other peak. I then want it to add that time to a spreadsheet to the data pad. I then want it to go to the next peak add the time between the previous peak and the current peak to data pad. I then wanted to go to the next peak and do this until it reaches the end of the file. So laying this out in, in kind of plain English, I want to analyze the whole block from the first R wave to the last R wave and measure the intervals between each R wave. Well, conveniently, LabChart has all the functionality to do that. Um, and then we can string it all together with a rather elegant little macro to do the task automatically for us. So first of all, let's just look at the different commands we've got. Um, we've got a find command in the command menu, and the find command is quite clever. It allows us to look for various things. It allows us to look for comments, event markers, but one of the functionalities is to look for data. And for instance, here we can look for maxima, minima, data above or data below. I want to look for maxima, in other words, peaks, and I've written here a threshold of 10%. I know this works. I could choose 15 maybe or 8 or some other number, but I know that 10% work. And I can select a single point. So I press Find. And what the cursor has done is jumped to the first available R wave. You can see this black, black line indicating the first R wave. If I then repeat this by going to Command, Find Next, it'll find the next peak. And if I press Control F3, which is a shortcut for that, it'll find the next peak if I keep pressing it, it'll keep zapping through and find all of my peaks. So we know that that function works quite well. So let's go back to the start again. And this time we can go back to the find section and we can choose a different option down the bottom here. Before we just so chose a single point. Now we can select to the previous point. In other words, it'll select the distance from where it's just been to where it is now gone to. So you press find and you can see it's selected an area, it's indicated here by this black section from where the cursor was to the first R wave. And if I repeat this, it'll then select the area between each of our R waves as we go through the file. So that's very useful. We want to be able to now add this distance, the time it takes from this R wave to the next R wave, we want to add that to our data pad. So the first thing we need to do is go to our data pad and make sure the channels are set up correctly. At the moment, there are no channels set up. So channel A, I want to choose selection and active point, and I want to choose selection duration. So in this case, the data that are selected, I want to add the duration of that selection, and I want to add that to the data pad in seconds. I can format that and make sure it's in seconds. Let's say two decimal places is fine with me. Press OK press OK and now it's going to give us the duration of each of our R waves. So we go back to our chart view. Let's do that selection again. So command, find and find that. Find it again. So that's our first R interval. And we can add that to the data pad by choosing commands, add to data pad or by clicking on the add to data pad button or by pressing control D. So I'm going to press control D. That is added that to the data pad. I can then go to the next find, pressing Control F3, add that to Datapad, Control F3, add to Datapad using Control D, and I can continue doing that for the first 15 seconds of data. Go to my Datapad, and you can see it's automatically now added my RR intervals into the Datapad, which is great. I'm just going to delete that so I don't have it in a minute. 
So that's very useful. Uh, we could plod through this entire file pressing Control F3, Control D repetitively um, all the way till the final uh, heartbeat is gone. Uh, that will take a little while. Um, so now we need to kind of get into the into the mode of macro programming. So going back to the start of the file again, um, it just so happens that this file starts halfway between two R waves. So we need to program a macro. So the first search finds the first peak and then a series of repeats takes place where it finds subsequent peaks and measures the distance between them. So once we start recording the macro we need to tell the computer to find the first peak once, select that as a point and then repeat until it reaches the end of the block from then on selecting the distance to the next peak. So I'll just show you how we do this very simply. We go to macro and we start recording. So you can see down in the bottom right here it says recording macro. So we're starting to record our macro and everything we click on, select and do from now on is recording the macro. So we'll go to commands, find, find our local maxima at 10% height and we're going to do a single point selection and find it. Okay, so now we've found the first R wave. We can repeat this uh, by selecting now the data in between. Conveniently, um, the programming language that the lab chart uses is very simple, but it gives us a few little helpers. We don't have to remember how to program a loop, for instance. We can go to the macro menu, choose recording commands, and we can choose this repeat while in block. So essentially, whatever I do after clicking this menu button, and I, when I finished it, it'll repeat whatever was between the first click and the last click as a loop until it reaches the end of the block and we'll see how that works in a second. So repeat while in block and a little window comes up saying we're currently within the repeat while in block section. So now we're going to back to commands, we're going to find and we're going to find 10% of our local maxima, let's move that out of the way, 10% of our local maxima and we're going to select to the previous point, so we're going to select the distance from where we just were to where we're going to go and press find. And you can see it's selected quite nicely those data. So we're going to go to commands now, add that to datapad. And that is our cycle, that is our looped cycle. So now we can end the repeat by clicking on the end repeat button. And in fact we can now stop recording the macro by going to macro stop recording. It'll ask us what we want to call it and I'm going to call it RR interval in block and I'm going to put in brackets uh, first set. In other words, the, the, um, I can't do that, I'll just change that. So the first RR, into RR interval is not going to measure, it's just going to kind of use that as a line of sight to set it up and I'm going to save that. It'll load up this little window here which tells us what the language is for our, our macro we just programmed and it's actually worth looking through this and just seeing what we've done so what we've done is we've started off by doing a find looking for a local maxima with a threshold of, of uh, 10 percent we've then found the data uh, and we have added those to the data pad and then we've gone sorry we've not added those to the data pad you found the data then we've gone back down here We've done a find command where we're looking for the uh, maxima again and this time we're going to be selecting it. We're then going to uh, add some to the data pad and the loop here is listed. We're going to loop until we get to the end of the file. So we can press close. So let's just see if this works. So we select the first part of the block, go to data pad and let's just uh, delete that point so we've got a clear data pad go to the start of the block, go to macro and run this R interval in block first set macro and there you can see the little black selection box is whizzing across the screen flying from left to right and if I zoom right the way out you can see it slowly but surely plodding through our file and while it's doing that our data pad is filling up with RR intervals you can see them scrolling down here so I'm just going to sit here and watch this on the screen as it plods through. You can see it's pretty good. It hasn't missed any R waves yet. This is a particularly clean ECG. You'd have to play with your threshold values to make sure this worked for your application. Obviously you could not be looking at ECG, you could be looking at anything. Um, but that's plodding through there quite nicely. 
Um, this computer isn't the fastest in the world, it does take a few minutes to do this. But it's certainly a lot quicker than pressing Ctrl F3, Ctrl D repeatedly. So here we are, almost at the end. So it's reached the end now, that's great. And here we go, look at the data pad. And now we have 526 RR intervals calculated, starting from the first RR interval and ending in the last one. So I hope that helps, that just shows you what you can do with macros. Um, the only thing you need to be aware of with macros when using lab chart is the macro is saved in the lab chart file. So if you wanted to use this macro in future analyses, you'd have to save the macro in one of the template files or save this file as a template file. Use that template to do your recording and then you're able to use that macro for analysis at the end. And I use many of these little macros just for doing quick measurements. So uh, I hope that helped.